Hello and welcome. My name is Natty Cash, and we are once again dealing with our NCAA Imperialism uh, series. Uh, this is part eight in the series, so if you're just coming to this video for the first time, please look. There's a link in the description to get you to the beginning of this series. Um, again, this Imperial si series is taking every single college basketball program in the country putting them together one by one until there is one program left. So again, I thank you each of you for watching this video and uh, we're gonna get ourselves right into this. I hope that we're gonna see some teams we haven't seen compete yet um, and uh, yeah, let's get started. Here we are at the wheel. Let's see what our first matchup is of the day. It looks like we're headed out west going to Cal State Fullerton Titans. They have not had a chance to uh, expand yet. They're going to try to expand going to the Northwest. And even though they do technically share a tiny little border with UCLA, we're going to say that Northwest is going to put them up against the USC Trojans. And look at this result. I am very surprised that we start off the video with such an upset. Cal State Fullerton ends up taking it a back and forth game but they end up taking the win against USC that is incredible and you never know when you're gonna lose and unfortunately for USC this is their time and uh, Cal State Fullerton takes a nice big chunk of California but back to the wheel we are let's see where we're headed next looks like we're headed to Florida as we're going to see the Gators in action. We have yet to see this team in action and they're going to try to expand going to the Northeast which means they're going to be taking on the Ospreys from North Florida. And as we see the results Florida Gators do take the win. Well there were certain points in the first half where North Florida was putting up a good fight but Florida was able to take pretty healthy lead and eventually win the matchup. And now the Florida Gators have their first piece of conquered land. And back to the wheel. We went west coast and east coast. Where are we headed next? Looks like we're going to go visit the Jaguars. And uh, we're headed to Indiana to see where they're going to expand as they're going to try to push to the uh, south or er, northeast no, north, sorry, northwest. But based on where they're positioned, northwest really just means that they have to take on the Cincinnati uh, Bearcats. And unfortunately for the Jaguars, uh, the Bearcats were going to be too much for them, creating a pretty healthy lead in the end and uh, taking some more territory. And just like that, Cincinnati expands once again, now taking a pretty healthy portion of the state of Indiana. But back to the spinner we go. Who's going to get the matchup next? Looks like we're headed to North Carolina to see the Elon Phoenix. And which direction are they going to try to expand for the first time? Looks like they're going to try to go to the south, a little bit to the southeast. Which, uh, from where they're at, south means they're going to take on the North Carolina Tar Heels. And what was in a surprisingly close matchup, North Carolina does take the win. They were leading basically the entire game, but Elon certainly made a uh, pretty uh, valiant effort to try to take them on, but that just means North Carolina expands some more. And even though it's only a small portion of the map that North Carolina gets to take over, this just means there's much a greater chance that we're going to see this Duke-North Carolina matchup sooner rather than later. But back once again to the wheel to see where we're headed next. Looks like we're headed out to San Diego as we are going to see the Toreros. And as we spin this arrow, if there's anything that's directly south, we're going to spin again. We're going to spin that again one more time because we can't really go directly south. And we're going to head off to the east which means that they're going to take on San Diego State. And unfortunately for the Toreros, uh, San Diego State was just too much for them, basically having a blowout win and then able to take their territory. And now San Diego State 
and starting to make themselves a presence in Southern California as well. I needed to make a quick correction here because I had noticed I forgot to switch the Hawaii Islands um, to the ownership of Cal State Fullerton and so um, this is what they look like now when they're owned by Cal State Fullerton. So back to the wheel let's see where we're going next looks like we're headed to visit the Drake Bulldogs this will be their first time in action as they're gonna try to expand to the northeast which to the northeast means they're going against the Iowa Hawkeyes to try to take a bigger control out of the state of Iowa and even though this was a tight one all the way through back and forth game I was able to take a lead in the late parts of the second half and able to secure the six point victory. And like that, the Hawkeyes make another state of intent trying to control the Iowa area. Once again, back at the spinner, see where we're headed next. We've been jumping all over the country. It looks like now we're headed down to southern Louisiana this is their first chance to try to expand as they're gonna try to expand going to the south uh, southwest I do want to apologize this is actually the southeastern Louisiana Lions and but them going southwest means that they're gonna take on LSU and unfortunately for the Lions LSU is too much of a, a hurdle to climb they were they were leading for most of the first half but LSU were able to take a healthy lead and eventually finish the matchup in style. And now LSU has their first chance to expand in this series. Way to go. But we're back again at the wheel. See if we're going to find a team that hasn't expanded or a team that already has. And we're going to Bradley. Now this team has expanded before. We'll see what direction they want to try to go as they work towards the north and for them that means they're going to expand towards the northern Illinois Huskies and Bradley once again gets a chance to conquer it was a close game at the beginning but Bradley was able to take their lead and make it a comfortable win in the end and like that now Bradley becomes one of the biggest uh, areas in the state of Illinois and becomes a important player in that state and back to the wheel we are to see where we're headed next and it looks like we're in a similar area as we're going to the Missouri Tigers the Tigers have had a expansion in an earlier video but now as they try to go north they are now going to take on the Western Illinois leather leathernecks and in the end Missouri is the one that gets to expand after taking the lead in the first half they didn't really look back as they eventually had a comfortable win and with that the Tigers expand a little bit further and also then uh, get a pretty decent chunk into the state of Illinois as well but once again we're back to the wheel let's see where we're headed and it looks like we're going out west as we go to see Boise State a team has that, that has done lots of expansion we will respin if it's going directly west, but it is not. It's going down to the south, which heading south in that direction will mean they're going to go against the Sacramento State University. And it is Sacramento State that takes down the Goliath in the west with a pretty handsome lead. They were close for most of the first half, but Sacramento State went on a run and completely demolished the Goliath that was the Boise State Broncos and this is why these uh, videos are awesome because a small little area like Sacramento State they get a big upset and now look at the size of their land that they got to take just incredible look at that space that they now have they've now got their moment of glory in this video and let's head back to the wheel to see if we're going to get a surprise, if we're going to get a big team. Well, we are headed off to find LaSalle. LaSalle gets a chance to expand for the first time. So they're going to try going to the southeast. 
where they get their first chance to expand by going against an Ivy League team in the Quakers. And it is Penn that ends up getting the win. There was a big lead taken by LaSalle very early on, but the Quakers kept working and brought it back into a tight game in the second half and were able to pull off the victory. And just like that, Philadelphia has been narrowed down to just two college programs. Is it going to be an Ivy League program or the Villanova Wildcats that eventually take away um, this metro area? But back again to the wheel we go. We got to keep going and narrow these down one by one as we head to the uh, country's capital. The Colonels have not had a chance to expand yet. And they're going to try to expand by going to the southeast. And the southeast from here, in this tiny little area, means that they're going to take on Navy, who have had a good chance of expanding recently. And it is once again Navy that brings home the victory, getting an early lead and never really relinquishing really that other than a little blip in the beginning of the second half. Navy once again gets a chance to expand. And even though that's not that much space, Navy once again gets to take over a small little piece of land. But once again, we're back to the wheel. Are we going to see a team for the first time? Are we going to see a team that wants to expand further? Uh, looks like we're going for a first timer as we go to Valparaiso. Well, let's see what direction they want to try to expand. Um, unfortunately, they actually can't go directly north, as that is, I think, Lake Michigan. So we'll spin one more time to see what direction they're going to go. They're going to head to the east, which means for them, they're going to take on Notre Dame. And uh, what looks a lot closer on the score sheet, uh, Notre Dame does get the victory, even though they were leading most of the way through. Valparaiso tried to keep it close but could not pull off the victory, and Notre Dame gets to expand. And with that, Notre Dame gets their first piece of land and starts to put themselves into contention for a highly congested state of Indiana. Well, let's keep things going, see where we head next. Looks like we're off to Alabama, as we're going to go to Alabama A&M. This will be their first time to try to expand, as they're going to try to go to the northwest and so from Alabama A&M going to that south uh, or sorry northwest that means they're going to take on Lipscomb and it is Lipscomb that do take the victory close game in the first half but Lipscomb were able to take the uh, uh, handily victory away from A&M so Lipscomb have their first chance to take land as they expand further south. Let's keep going and see where we can get to. Uh, where's the next stop we're going to have? Looks like we're headed to the northeast. As we're going to see where Quinnipiac is going to expand. They're going to try to expand to the south, a little bit to the southeast which means for them, they're going to try to then hop onto Long Island and take over Hofstra. And it is Hofstra that get the dominant victory in the end. That They were close near the first half, but put on the gas pedal and rolled to a comfortable victory. And now Hofstra not only has land on Long Island, but has expanded into the state of Connecticut as well. So let's spin the wheel again, see where we're headed. Uh, looks like we're headed off to see Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt has expanded once before, but they're going to try a second time by going to the southwest, which means going southwest, they're going to take on Austin Pay. And just like that, Vanderbilt gets to expand once again. With, even though it was a close game at the beginning, Vanderbilt was able to take it the rest of the way and make the win a comfortable one. And just like that, Vanderbilt gets another expansion, which means they get to expand pretty extensively into Tennessee and even further south from there as well. But back to the wheel, 
where are we headed next as we try to keep narrowing down these teams one by one looks like we're headed off to see the Manhattan Jaspers the Jaspers get a chance to expand for the first time as they're gonna try to go a little bit south and because again this is a very small part of the map here the Manhattan Jasper is going south but a little bit to the west southwest that means they're gonna take on the Columbia Lions and it is Columbia that does take home the victory they have taken victories before which just means they get a chance to expand once more in the area and like that Columbia gets to take another piece of land um, I just want to clarify I did change the uh, Terriers lands of uh, St. Francis Brooklyn back to white now that there isn't any clash there so we can clearly see the difference between them and Rutgers and St. John's here but back once again to our lovely wheel to see where we're headed and it looks like we're headed off to Texas to visit the Horned Frogs and let's see what direction they're gonna expand as they're gonna try to expand to the east which means they're gonna take on Sam Houston State to try to get a big piece of the state of Texas and it is Sam Houston once again with the victory close game throughout and then Sam Houston went on a offensive run it was a low scoring game in general but Sam Houston ends up getting the comfortable victory in the end and with that Sam Houston State once again gets a chance to expand again becoming a force to be reckoned with in the state of Texas so back to the wheel we go Let's see where we're headed next looks like we're off to Mississippi as we're gonna see the Bulldogs in action they're gonna be expanding for the first time or trying to expand for the first time by moving to the north a little bit to the northeast which means going from the northeast means that they're gonna be taking on Vanderbilt but it is once again Vanderbilt that gets a chance to expand once more they took a lead and never really squandered it going to another comfortable winning and it is Vanderbilt that once again expand giving it a pretty decent size of land as it kinda snakes its way down into the south but we're back again at the wheel let's see where we go from here as we're headed to the Norfolk State Spartans this will be their first time expanding now they're right on the east coast so if we're getting something directly east like this we're just gonna spin once more and see what direction we're gonna try to go let's try not to keep spinning to the east see if we can go somewhere else we're gonna go to the kind of a southwest west direction and based on where they are uh, going to the west it just misses NC State and they're gonna face off against Old Dominion and it is Old Dominion that get the win close game for the most part but Old Dominion do start to separate in the second half and get their first chance to expand and like that Old Dominion get their first piece of land they get a nice piece of the East Coast now that we leave the East Coast, let's see where we're headed off to next. Looks like we're headed to Chicago where we're going to find DePaul Blue Demons. And let's see what direction DePaul's going to try to expand into. They're going to go directly south, which means they get a chance against Chicago State. And even though it was a close matchup, DePaul was leading the entire time and comes away with the 10 point victory which means once again DePaul expand and define their place in the state of Illinois but back to the spinner once more to see where we're headed and looks like we're going to Texas once again to look at Texas State despite all the action that we've seen in Texas over the series Texas State has not had a chance to go as they're going to try to expand to the south which means they're going against Texas A&M Corpus Christi and a highly entertaining match that went back and forth the entire game with lead switches all the way through it is Texas State that does come away with the victory in the end 
And like that, Texas State now has their first piece of conquered land as they take a significant piece out of the state of Texas. But back to the wheel once more. Let's see where we're headed now. Well, we're going back to one of the dominant pieces in the Midwest, the Xavier Musketeer. And we'll see where they're going to try to expand to continue where they're going. Looks like they're going up to the north. Uh, looks like the northwest. Which, when we look at where the logo is placed, we're going to say that northwest is going to point us to Detroit Mercy, this little area right in the state of Michigan. And what turned out to be a very thrilling game, Xavier does pull out the victory, but Detroit really put it against Xavier, and it became a really close game. Xavier was winning for basically the whole second half, but Detroit did not give up. But Xavier does get the conquer at the end. And this just means that there's a nice little cleanup that happens for Xavier as they, again, assert their dominance. Um in this area. We're gonna spin a couple more times here to see where we're going. Looks like, oh, we're headed back to Florida where we're gonna see the A&M Rattlers in action. Now where they're positioned, we're not going to accept any arrow that's going directly south like that. So we'll just spin once more till we get something reasonable. We're gonna say that they're gonna try to go to the the west from here. And based on where they're positioned, we really only had a couple neighbors as options. West means they're going to face off against Troy. And as we look at the matchup, it is Troy that takes the win. Closer first half, but Troy then puts on the gas pedal and makes it a comfortable win in the end. And now Troy has expanded further into Florida and getting a longer edge on the Gulf Coast. Let's keep rolling on the spinner here to see where we're headed next. It looks like we're headed off to Wright State. As Wright State is going to get into their first action, so they're going to try to go to the southeast, which means that Wright State is going to take on Xavier once again, uh, with Xavier trying to expand further. And it is Xavier that ends up getting the win, Although it was close for most of the first half, Xavier did take the opportunity to uh, push, put on the pressure and eventually get the win. And with that, Xavier gets to expand further with uh, only a few teams left in the state of Ohio at this point. And we're back at the wheel. We're going to do one more spin here to see where we're headed to finish off this video. It looks like we're going to see the Goliath of South Dakota State Jackrabbits. And let's see what direction they're going to try to expand. They're going to try to go to the southwest. And I tried to line up the arrow as best as I could from the middle of this logo. That actually points directly at the Colorado State Rams. And it is the Rams that defend their territory. A close game. For most of it, it was South Dakota State winning the first half, but Colorado State ended up pulling away and defeating the Jackrabbits in the end. And once again, we've got a tiny little state that takes the chance, defends, and takes a huge piece of land in the end, becoming the biggest piece of land in the country. And there we have it. We look at the map now and we see some of the changes. Note that we went from blue in some of these big areas to green now, which is a pretty big change. Um, and then smaller changes throughout the map as uh, we continue to narrow it down. I realize I did make this video a little bit longer because I wanted to stop here and note that what you see in front of you are the last 200 teams that are left. And you might still think that that's a lot, but we're actually pretty close to being halfway through this process. So thank you very much for watching and continuing with this series. Please like and subscribe. Um, that always helps uh, to like videos, uh, especially for me as a newer YouTuber. Um, but please stick around. More videos will be coming. Um, and just thank you for watching. So see you next time.